Good afternoon and welcome to Carbon Crunching Clerics. Today we have with us a Reverend Marcus Zippelin. Hello. Uh, Father Neil Hook. Hello there. And our very important special guest today is Dr. Julia Edwards. And I'm going to leave Marcus to introduce Dr. Julia Hello. a bit. Um, you will all be pleased to hear that Governing Body has happened this week. And Marcus is going to tell us some news about those things that have happened at Governing Body. Over to you, Marcus. Yeah, thanks, Sophie. Yeah, no, it's been a, an exciting week in the life of the church in Wales because it's really marked a, a change in direction and emphasis, a really significant one. I mean, one that's very much in line with with the um, uh, you know, mission and ministry of, of, of Christians around the world as we're sort of rediscovering it, but it's really good to have taken a concrete step. So on last week, governing body was debating a motion about whether we should um, a centre declaring a climate emergency in the church in Wales, as other churches have already done so, uh, and um, and then committing to a path of decarbonisation, you know, sort of reducing our carbon emissions to zero um, as quickly as possible uh, within within ten years. And there was there was near universal support for that, so it, it sailed through, which was fantastic, really. So we have recognised a climate emergency in the church in Wales which is great because that's where we're at and uh, and committing ourselves to to writing an action plan to decarbonize the, the church and bring that back to governing body so it can hopefully uh, ascend to it so that was really significant and as part of, the, of that i mean it's it's separate but very much related is an appointment within the church in wales of only a couple of weeks ago of uh, julia edwards to be a climate champion and it's Julia's task, not single-handed, but she has done a big job to do to try and pull together lots of threads and to, to, to write an action plan for the church in Wales um, about decarbonising and to try and, you know, encourage us to adopt that. But um, I think I'm, I'm sort of stealing her thunder. So if, if I just perhaps say hello, Julia, and perhaps get you to introduce yourself, but may, would you be able to sort of maybe just say a little bit about your background in I don't know, a couple of years before coming here and then and then what you hope to do in, the, in your new post. Ah, well, thank you. Thank you very much for the invite and uh, wonderful to be here. Uh, and yes, uh, this is really exciting, exciting times, exciting, exciting appointment. Um, and I've been in post for ooh, two weeks. So excellent. <laughs> wonderful to be here. Uh, yeah, my background, oh gosh, I'm a geographer by training, and then um, I was in teaching and, and researching in those sort of areas. Then I went to the Pacific uh, with the Methodist Church, and I was working over there as a mission partner, um, working in climate change and disaster management, and looking at the realities of what's happening at the moment, and that's the, that's the reality, really. Um, came back uh, and most recently I was working at the Welsh Refugee Council and since then I've come here. So that's a little bit about my background, um, but the actual post itself, as Marcus was saying, uh, stealing my thunder, um, the main purpose of the role is to create this action plan. Okay, so that's, that's the, the main task. And to do that, it's got to be a practical guide. You know, so whoever picks hold of this thing is going to read it and find its relevance to them. OK, and so we've got to take that back to governing body this time next year. So that's the purpose. Um, but of course, in doing that, it's also to raise awareness of the issue and the importance of this in, in the church. And I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm sitting in provincial office um, to do this role. And of course, then I've got that broad um, perspective I suppose across across Wales so it's working together with different dioceses um, finding out the good practice that's already happening and taking that forward and driving this as an issue for the church because it's already now embedded in our our understanding and um, I suppose are in the very heart of what we should be doing so that's what I'm doing um, linking awareness with the church and church members but also linking it hopefully to uh, policy and strategy as well going forward. So very exciting. Yeah, it very is, exciting isn't it? Indeed. It is. what, what have you been up to the last last couple of weeks? And I guess it's lots. Oh of gosh, meeting. yeah, that's it. That's uh, meeting lots and lots of people, having yeah. um, different invites to come to groups. And I was very fortunate yesterday to attend yeah, the yeah. eco group 
in your in your in St David's, uh, and that was great to come and find out what's happening, what the aspirations are already, um, and to sort of start making connections at this stage, really. So it's that it's reaching out to other partners and partner organisations that will be assisting us, um, and also trying to um, work out the structure of the church. So, <laughs> but that's that's um, probably another challenge for another day. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Another day, another month. <laughs> We've been trying to work out the structures of the church for the last two thousand years. <laughs> 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 it's really really great to have you on board Julia thank you very much for being here today uh, so you're probably wondering what we're all about and um, what we normally do on these sessions is that we choose a bible passage and then we talk about how we can weave creation care into our liturgies into our day-to-day -day, into everything that we do as church collectively um, and and individually as well so um, we're going to start by reading a little bit from a passage and I'm going to ask one of you guys to pray for us um and dr julia i know that you have to leave at some stage but um uh, that's that's fine just when you when you need to go just just go <laughs> thank you okay so our passage today is taken from psalm 104 verses 24 to 36 oh lord how manifold are your works in wisdom you have made them all the earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea great and wide, creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Levi Leviathan that you form to sport in it. These are all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Neil, uh, probably should have done the prayer before the reading, but would you like to pray for us? <laughs> Bless the Lord, who brings to birth life renewed by sun, by rain, who brings us flowing rivers and a fruitful earth. Lord, we give you thanks for your creation. We confess that we have not been proper stewards of that creation but we give you thanks for the opportunities that you're giving us now to bring about change in the lives of our households, of our communities, of our churches, of our countries, of your entire planet. And we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may join in the eternal song of praise, which echoes through the DNA of everything in creation. Amen. 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 So the month of May is a very, very busy month. Uh, we have Rogation Sunday. We have... Uh, Beer and Biscuits. Sorry? Beer and Biscuits. <laughs> we, have, we have Christian Aid Week. We have Pentecost. We have all sorts of things happening. So where are we going to start today? Let's start with Rogation Sunday. Um, Beer and biscuits. Beer and biscuits. Excellent. Away, away, away. <laughs> so at the end of the rogation walk, it's traditional to serve, and by traditional I mean going back centuries, um, to serve uh, beer and ramelation biscuits. Um, now, the problem that we've got is we don't know what ramelation biscuits taste like. We've lost the recipe. 
We know that there are plenty of references to Ramelation biscuits. Um, and we know that it it's like a corruption of the word uh, perambulate. Um, and perambulate um, means to uh, formally establish the boundaries of the parish. Perambulate, ambulare, to walk. Um, and that was what the Rogation Walk was all about. Um, it started off um, that the cleric, along with uh, the clerk, um, would walk and check on all the boundary stones of the parish to make sure that um, nobody had been shifting boundary stones and grabbing more land. Um, so it was about equity, but then it became an opportunity to celebrate uh, and to have um, a good time. Um, and you ended up with what's now referred to as the beating of the bounds um, and chasing small boys with sticks, which is not something that the church should ever get involved with. So let's <laughs> stick to beer and biscuits, shall we? Um, this Saturday, we're, rec we're recording this in um, mid-April. And this Saturday marks the first time that we can meet with five other people outside um, from five different households. So there is absolutely going to be the opportunity for you to do a rogation walk. Um, even if you're in the, uh, the town like me in Haverford West, even if you're in the big city uh, like Julia, um, there is plenty of wildlife. There are plenty of little oases um, and we have to think about those as well as the, the countryside. So get together, get together with some friends, five friends. And if you're going to do it as a congregation, just meet up in groups of six, leave 20 minutes, half an hour between each group um, and walk, pray your way. Uh, it's one of the things that we're encouraging people to do at the moment with the COP26 pilgrimage. Think of it as a little opportunity to do uh, a tiny little pilgrimage and just to pray um, and give thanks for God's creation as you go around and finish with beer and biscuits. Why not? Sounds great, Neil. I like the idea. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a good opportunity, isn't it, to be, just to be outside and to, to rejoice in, yeah, in your, your parish and, and where you are, you know, walking walk the borders if you if you can, yeah, I might try and do that. Even if you can't, reflect it in the church's liturgy. Yeah. Um, you know, pray, pray for creation. Regation Sunday is the ideal opportunity to really explore some sustained ideas of what um, regation means to us today. Uh, originally, it was a day of prayer and of fasting. Um, and people would make these processions and they recite the litany of the saints. It goes way back to the mid 450s and it was all about crops and people having enough to eat. And there are places in the world where people still don't have enough to eat. And there's a there's a bit of a crossover this year with um, uh, Christian Aid Week and Rogation coming together. The theme of, of Christian Aid Week um, this year is... Uh, all about the climate emergency um, and the slogan is every last drop it's about water poverty and the people not just having enough water to drink but not having enough water to grow the crops that they need to sustain uh, themselves so there's plenty of material out there on the Christian Aid page there are exemplar sermons there are prayers, there's lots of material that you can find online about Rogation Tide as well. If you're not going to be able to do a big Christian Aid event this year, or you're not going to be able to deliver the leaflets, consider having the two together on Rogation Sunday and doing something for Christian Aid uh, on Rogation Sunday in your, um, in your congregational worship. By the time this video goes out, we will be in a position where up to 30 people can, can gather outside and, as organised events. So it may be that uh, the church, uh, your churches might want to consider doing um, a sunflower seed planting with, with children's groups. Or um, I know that we're going to try and do a workshop on pa painting labels on slate to go in our, in our garden. So there's lots of little things that you can do, just little activities to engage with people, 
um, and just making sure that you're keeping within the bounds of the 30 people. Uh, it's it's well within. And it'd be a nice thing to do in, in the grounds of your churches um, in and around the, the diocese as well. If you're going to do a relation walk, do mm -hmm. it as a litter pick as well. Yeah. Take a black bag bag with you and pick up the litter that you see give back to the community mm. yeah that's a good thought Neil, isn't it i like that okay. combine those two together yeah mm. I mean, it's, it's a great time of year to do that walk isn't it there's so many things around now the flowers that are coming up one of our churches one of my churches johnston because um the, the guy who, who cut our grass um he's having a bit of difficulty doing that uh, he's done it so so well for years um, and it's grown a bit long, but there are an amazing amount of flowers coming up, you know, so um, <laughs> although I will cut it, I'm not in a great hurry because it's lovely to see to see them. It's just that time of year when things just want to live and be there, don't they present themselves? OK, so, I mean, we there are huge amounts of things to get through for um, May. Uh, other things that are happening in May are we've got calling um, and ministry Sunday, but we did say that we would probably talk about that at a later stage. Let's quickly just say goodbye to Dr. Julia, who's gone, who's gone, she's gone. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what is Ascension? That's a good place to start, isn't it? What, what are we celebrating when we talk about Ascension? Okay, so Acts chapter one, um, verses six through to about 14 tells the story. Um, of the ascension. The disciples are gathered there and then Jesus uh, ascends into heaven um, and there's the, the liturgy of the day has this fantastic opening narrative um, because ascension falls 40 days after Easter in the same way that Ash Wednesday falls 40 days before Easter. So it goes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we've been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers. And here's the key. Trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule, let us celebrate the occasion of his parting. That's the preamble that you say. It's not a prayer, it's an introduction. But it picks up that theme, doesn't it, of his reign over all creation and our submission to that. And as part of that submission, we also have to remember that we put gospel principles first. We put Christian principles first. We don't allow ourselves to be ruled by greed, by exploitation, um, by the accumulation of stuff, because that's not what Jesus wanted. Mm. Yeah, I hadn't quite connected in my mind that, that sense of it being linking to the kingdom season in a way, isn't it? And submitting yeah. to Christ's rule. Yeah, okay, that's that's helpful, isn't it? That preamble prayer. Uh, and, of, and of course, um, the ascension precedes Pentecost. And it, it marks the time when Jesus' bodily appear, resurrection appearance has come to an end, because that sort of mode of being present had its season and came to an end. But it had to, so that we could have the in a way that the sort of closer connection with Christ through his Holy Spirit, which means Jesus can be with us everywhere, anywhere, always. Um, so, 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 so in a way, we've got a closer connection now, but, but a very different one through God's Spirit. And we celebrate that then at, at Pentecost. So that's a good connection with that, with that season. I mean, I think, we're, we're, right, if okay, we want to think about Pentecost now? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, because... Um, <clears throat> I mean, on, on one level, um, we're, we're people moved by the Christians are those who are moved by the Spirit to you know, proclaim Christ as Lord and, and, and have the Spirit of Christ within them and to be changed into the person of Christ, but the image of Christ by, by that Spirit. And, um, uh, and, that, and that's who we are as a people. And it, and it links, I think, with what Paul says in, in Romans, talking about all of creation groaning in. Veil for the revealing of the children of, of God, you know, because creation 
is in a mess because we made a mess of it. It wants us to be more Christ-like. And the spirit does that, starts to, to, re, you know, to weave that within us and create that. So that, that's rather wonderful. Looking forward, Pentecost be, it sort of shows a, a dawning of more God's, God's children, you know, coming of age of God's children. And the creation longs for that. But also I think Pentecost points us back into the Bible to look for God's spirit, presence of God's spirit in and through creation and through history. And I guess that's what our psalm reminded us. Psalm 104 is just such a beautiful one, isn't it? That's the, that's the creation care sort of psalm, isn't it, really? And, and this wonderful description of the animals waiting upon God who gives them their food in, in due season. But then that those verses that talk about um, how, you know, God's spirit is what gives life and, and, it, and it gives them, and it, he takes it away, they return to the dust. The dawn of creation, the spirit brought order and beauty out of the waters of chaos. That's it, isn't it, Neil? Yeah, I mean, the very first line of the Bible, isn't it, is about the, God's spirit hovering over the, over the waters and being yeah. there active in, in creation. And then, um, uh, you know, in, in chapter two of, of Genesis, we've got God creating humans and molding Adam from the, from the dust of the earth and breathing the spirit in, into Adam and giving breath. So that in a way, it's kind of, that's Psalm 104 for, for humans, you know, just showing that God's giving us his, his breath. But, um, and I guess what, what one, one thing that's interesting for us as, as Christians, we think about creation care, is, um, uh, we, is the, the close link between the, the spirit that, w- that we know and celebrates arriving at, at Pentecost and the spirit in the Old Testament. And I, I, I think, that, I think that there's, um, that they're one and the same, but experienced almost in, in, in different ways. So in the Old Testament, the spirit um, is one word, in the, old te- the Hebrew uses the yeah, ruach, the spirit. Mm-hmm. But in, it, it occurs lots of times in the Old Testament, but it's translated either um, spirit with a small or, or a capital S, and it's translated as breath of God or, um, or, or, or wind. And, um, and so whenever you see those words, it tends to be a translation of, of the Hebrew one root word, um, ruach. And so, um, you know, in Genesis, it's the, uh, in my translation, it's um, it's the wind of God that hovers over the waters in the beginning, but it's the breath of God that goes into Adam. But it's the one word, ruach, God's spirit. So all th- and same word that's in Psalm 104, God's spirit. That's ruach. You know the same, the same word. So, I don't want to be controversial, but it's interesting, oh, yeah. isn't it? That in the Hebrew, that's uh, feminine. That word is feminine. Is that right? That's good, Lou. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um so um so we have god the father who um is uh, without gender uh yahweh is without gender we've got this god the son who is incarnate um as masculine we've got god the spirit who in hebrew is female but of course through the translation process we went from ruach to spiritus in latin to ghost in um english and spiritus is is a neuter in Latin, but ghost in Old English is masculine. Mm. So so as we've gone through those translations, um, there is an argument made by some um, that uh, we have lost our connection with the the feminine part of the Trinity, uh, with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that really is actually. That's a whole different argument, but that's rather beautiful to be reminded of that, isn't it? Um, it, it? Right in the heart of God. Yeah, I love that. Practically, though, Pentecost is the opportunity to go nuts. <laughs> even, even, um, yeah, even in in lockdown, even in pandemic. Okay, uh, you're not going to be able to blow anything, but shakers made out of yogurt pots with beans or lentils inside, noisemakers of various kinds. Uh, flags, um, uh, even um, those um, those sticks that you use that you put in plant pots. I can't remember what they're called uh, to keep the the plant straight. Bamboo with canes. with some ribbon. Yeah, but smaller versions, or you can get bamboo canes um, with um, w- with bits of um, red ribbon, a multicolored ribbon, red and and orange and and yellow. Um, and when we have the, the Pentecost reading uh, from Acts chapter two, the first six verses, 
and the spirit uh, comes into the room, that great rushing wind, get all the shakers going, get that noise, get the kids, get everybody uh, waving those banners. And a time when we can't sing at the moment, mm. um, you know, we, there's nothing to stop us from um, shaking. Um, get the, the organist, if, he, if you've got an organist in your church to sort of like make a, night, a, a mighty voice, a mighty noise. Um, and the other thing that is tradition in some churches, of course, is to have as many different versions of that, just that short reading, verses one to six, read in as many different languages as the congregation is able. So if you've got a French speaker, as well as English, as well as Welsh, a German speaker, try to get as many languages as you possibly can, mm. just to pick up that, that idea. Um, and that, that brings us to the idea of the creation, the whole world, that we are one family, that we are one body um, in Christ as well. Yeah, good thought, I like that, good, good method of having a celebration, good thinking. Yeah. It's the church's birthday. Normally, um, you know, in coffee afterwards, we'd have a, a tray bake and we'd have a birthday cake or we'd have muffins. We can't do that uh, this year. Candles are OK, of mm. course. Um, flames of fire descended upon all of them in the upper room. Um, so uh, you can get your, your old candles out. Just be careful. Um, alcoholic hand gel. Yeah, and yeah, sorry, yeah, so classic. Don't necessarily mix my brothers and my sisters. I have to say, I'm I'm very enthused by all of these things that we could I could be doing in, outside in the garden. I might have to edit this bit out, but I'm just getting more excited about all of the. <laughs> I was thinking, um, but you did remind me that it's actually the Thy Kingdom Come season as well uh, between yep. Ascension and Pentecost, which we we might want to mention. So, um, yeah. Uh, that the, there's lots of resources on Thy Kingdom Come website and on the CPO resources website. But um, yeah, have you got any thoughts about Thy Kingdom Come and how we can use that even when we're still locked down, although slightly less locked down than we were? So the Thy Kingdom Come is uh, nine days. It runs from uh, Ascension Day, which is a Thursday, through Exile Day Sunday, which is the Sunday after Ascension. Uh, which uh, the church keeps as ministering calling Sunday, the church in Wales, uh, through to Pentecost. And this year, the theme is praying with Mary. There's lots of resources um, that are there. Um, and um, that includes uh, free booklets and bookmarks and charts and, and all of that sort of thing um, to get you keeping that novena, keeping that nine days uh, of prayer. Um, so go check that out. Uh, the diocese is going to be doing some stuff as well. Lots of different resources for different denominations, but they all, are, you know, uh, don't fool. You've got to stick to the Anglican stuff. Um, you know, cast your net wide um, and and draw it in. I guess that the um, My Kingdom Come is it's particularly about praying for people to come to faith, isn't it? Which is one of the pick five. Two. Pick some people take, and pray yeah. for them. Yeah, I love that. Take, take five and, um, and pick five. So once a day, take five minutes and pray for five people by name. Okay, lovely. Because, And I guess what we've been talking about earlier with Pentecost and Ruach and God's Spirit is this sense of that the spirit of salvation, that we're praying that thy kingdom come will come upon people, is the same spirit of creation. That's just something rather magnificent that God's spirit is undivided in that way and it's the same spirit that creates and saves you know and that's just and they um I guess that's something to, to just to kind of keep keep in mind and I often wonder so what so I mean Pentecost is special I'm thinking well, what is it that's special about it because this God's spirit was around before you know in in New Testament let alone let alone the old so it hasn't it didn't just appear then but there's something special about Pentecost the way the way it is and then um, Different ways of interpreting that, but I often think that it's, it's when the church is, becomes conscious in a way of God's spirit uh, in a new way and becomes not just an a, um, a patient of the spirit, something that's moved by the spirit, but 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 not so conscious, but but an agent, you know, something that actually understands it because they see it in Christ, takes it on and lives that lives that way consciously, and there's something really powerful about that. And I think if, if, as you think about our creation care calling you know we know the problem we know what how christ 
calls us to live in a different way. God's Spirit is calling us to take that on now, not just be buffeted by other people telling us what to do, but but for ourselves to, to live it and embody it, you know, and be, a, be an agent of God rather than just a patient. Taking it all the way back right to the very beginning to what Marcus had to say about the fantastic news that the church in Wales has followed the examples of other uh, Christian bodies in declaring a, a climate emergency. One of the things of Pentecost is about unity. The Old Testament reading is always the Tower of Babel. And the idea that mankind was fractured into different parts with different voices. And then the spirit comes at Pentecost and suddenly we Christians can speak with one voice again. In terms of the climate emergency, that is something that is really, really important. If you're listening to this podcast and you're feeling, well, what can my little church do? reach out to the other churches around you, but not just the other Anglican churches, Baptist, Methodist, URC, Presbyterian, Roman Catholic, Quakers, all of the different denominations recognize the climate extinction events that are coming upon us. And we have to commit ourselves to working together, to speaking with one voice about this. And what better place to start than Pentecost? Marcus, would you like to say a closing prayer for us? That'd be great. Thank you. Heavenly Father, as we thought about the month ahead, there's so much in the season um, for us to celebrate and give thanks for as we walk uh, our parishes, as we celebrate the gift of your Son, our Lord, seeking to live under him in all areas of our life and as we celebrate the presence of your holy spirit throughout all creation but alive and active in us as the holy spirit of christ help us to use all these gifts and understandings in service of each other and your creation through jesus christ our lord amen amen, amen. amen. thank you that's a wrap <laughs>